If your child is age seven or above, you are probably familiar with the gaming behemoth that is Fortnite Battle Royale. I'm Frankie Ward, I'm a gaming and esports host, and I'm here to tell you what exactly a battle royale is, and if Fortnite is game safe for your child to play. One of the reasons for Fortnite's massive cultural impact, apart from being fun, colourful, and easy to jump into and get started on, is its emphasis on cross-play. So traditionally with games, say like Call of Duty, a PlayStation player could only play against other PlayStation players. But Fortnite likes to share its game servers, so if you jump in on Xbox, you can play against someone on PC, Nintendo Switch, or even on mobile. So now kids can start playing together no matter what device they have, which is pretty much mind-blowing for anyone who's struggled to actually play with their friends before. But what is a battle royale? Well, if you've seen or read The Hunger Games, you're probably familiar with the concept. Typically, 100 players drop into a map via a parachute or a glider, and then they have to loot buildings, find things like medical kits and guns, and start killing each other. What makes Fortnite different is that not all players are trying to get to the end. A lot of them are actually trying to build really great structures, find rare loot like boogie bombs that they can chuck at other players to make them start dancing and just achieving feats that make them proud to be a player that they can show off to their mates in the playground about. The weapons in Fortnite have that emphasis on being colourful and inoffensive, so like your boogie bombs that make people dance and your plumbing projectiles, but they do also have guns that have recognisable names, such as the submachine gun or the suppressed pistol. The other thing that's important to note is these guns don't even draw blood. So when your child takes damage in Fortnite, they'll have a little red dash above their head to indicate that they've, they've taken some damage and they're in trouble, but they never ever will have blood drawn from them or draw blood from another player. You can really only focus on that target practice, and that's really what Fortnite is all about. Now, Fortnite Battle Royale has been rated a Peggy 12 for mild violence. So the official advice is that if your child is under the age of 12, this game is not for them. However, we all know it's not quite that simple, especially as your child gets closer to that 12 age. Now, I captured this footage myself on my gaming PC at home. I deliberately went to congested areas to try and find the violence, and this is pretty much the worst it got. So if you feel like your child can handle that, they can handle Fortnite Battle Royale. Now, Fortnite is an online multiplayer game, which means there will be strangers interacting with your child on the internet but there are measures you can take to stop them from actually talking to your child. So if your child is playing in a squad game and they have a member free, that will be filled by a member of the public that they potentially don't know. However, you can combat this by simply going to the settings, selecting audio options and switching voice chat off. If your child complains that now they can't speak to the other players that they do know, there are options such as a group chat via Skype or a gaming server a lot of players use called Discord, where they can communicate with the people they know rather than having to use the in-game voice chat with people they don't. Now, you'll know that Fortnite is a free-to-play game, but it's got to make its money somewhere. So how it does that is by charging players to buy in-game V-Bucks. This is essentially store credit that you can spend on things like the premium battle pass and also custom emotes and skins. So emotes is things like that, flossing, dancing, all your kids are doing on the playground. And your skins are your character designs. The way that V-Bucks work is on the in-game menu, you're gonna see loads of purchase buttons. So there is lots and lots of opportunities for your child to get your credit card and spend some money without your say so. So it might be worth having a conversation upfront about what they can spend on Fortnite and also making sure that your card details are not saved on the platform they're using. For example, if you were to use PayPal to purchase V-Bucks, on a PC, it will store your information. So you want to make sure that you set aside some time after you've purchased V-Bucks to then go back and delete your information. 
Fortnite is not a pay to play game. That means you don't actually need to purchase any V-Bucks and your child can actually earn them by playing and doing well in game. That does mean if they want to save up V-Bucks for those emotes and skins, they are going to have to spend a lot more time in game as well as doing quite well, but they still have a chance to win. Your child may very well have mentioned a premium battle pass to you. Now, a premium battle pass costs around a thousand B bucks, and around a thousand B bucks costs about eight pounds. So, over the ten week period, it lasts. It costs about four pounds or less a month, basically like a Netflix subscription. Now, the premium battle pass will challenge your child to take on different challenges in the game that don't necessarily focus on winning that victory royale. And in exchange for those challenges being completed, they will get experience points and they'll get even more V-Bucks. So they can spend them on rare in-game loot like those emotes and those dances. So your child doesn't actually need one, but it will open up opportunities that don't just focus on the win. Now it might be worth ringing the parents of your child's friends to see if their children have premium battle passes as well, because it feels like if one has them, everyone's going to want one. So if you make a decision as a unit, you're going to be stronger in resisting or agreeing with whether your child should have one or not. Now, as I work in the gaming industry, I am a little bit biased towards Fortnite because I think it's a fun, accessible game that anyone can play. And as it's on any platform, it doesn't really have any barriers to entry. Now, I'm not a social scientist, so take what I say with a pinch of salt, but I do think that Fortnite can actually develop some really useful skills. It's great for team building if your child is playing in a squad. They have to communicate so effectively via voice comms to achieve that victory royale, and it will also make them make some really fast-paced decisions. Otherwise, they'll have to lose and start all over again. So in summary, the guns aren't really that realistic and aren't going to teach your children anything about military operations. There are no knives and there's no blood or realistic deaths in Fortnite. You're simply eliminated, knocked out, you're beamed up and you're good to go in for another go. As with any multiplayer game, I'd simply suggest sitting on the sofa and watching your child play a game. The beautiful thing about Fortnite is every round tells a new story, so you might find yourself getting really into it. You can also download Fortnite Battle Royale onto your mobile, so why don't you just download it and have a play? You might even see me in there. I've been Frankie Ward, and thank you so much for watching this episode of Game Safe. If you have any comments or questions, be sure to leave them below, and also let us know if you want us to cover any other games, because I like playing them, let's be honest. Thank you.